Hey, this is Kevin again. We're here for Dart in the Shell, Episode 3. Last time when we left off, we had our very simple shell script that could say what's up to people's names. We use the options class that exists in the SDK core library. So if you type what's up and a series of names, you get those names printed out. And if you don't include any args, you get what's up world. So let's switch over to the Dart editor and see that code again. Again, very straightforward. We use the options class. We parse out the arguments. If there are no names, we just say world. Otherwise, we loop through all the names provided in, and we print those out. So now, let's imagine in this scenario, we wanted to expand out what we do in what's up. Um, some examples might be, maybe we want to change the greeting. So instead of saying what's up, we could say something else. Maybe we want to change the format of how things are printed out. Um, maybe we can yell things by making everything caps. And so to, in order to do that, we need to provide other arguments and a format for those arguments. So very commonly, and again, I'll use my favorite example, some, something like git. So if you look at, um, let's look at um, the push command, for instance, you see that basically the format is all of the flags or options are specified with double dash and text. Sometimes there's a shortcut, which is by convention, a single character with a single dash, and then everything else kind of happens at the end. And actually I find this to be a pretty consistent framework for Unix type commands. In Windows, I was a little bit more used to using a slash, um, but certainly if you're in the POSIX Unix system, the double dash, full name, or single dash, single letter for abbreviations is really common. So staying consistent with that is really useful. Now we could do the work to parse through that arguments array, find things that match a certain format, and do the right parsing. But it turns out there's actually a library in the Dart SDK that does all this work for us, and it's called args. So if you want to look for the look at the documentation for the args library, you can go to api.dartlang.org, and you'll see args is the first parameter there, and it defines a whole set of things: how you define options, how you define flags, parameters for those things. You can even add your own commands. Let's see if we can find the uh, documentation for commands. So you can actually define subcommands for your arguments. So it actually is a very flexible library. Now I mentioned this is part of the SDK. It's loosely part of the SDK. It's provided by the Dart team, but you need to use the pub package manager to access it. So it's not like other libraries that are baked into the SDK that you download, like HTML or async. You need to use pub. And so if you want to look at those libraries, you can go to pub.dartlang.org, and you can see args is in here. And it mentions how you define a dependency on it. So let's go back to our project and see how easy it is to add this dependency to our existing project. So at the moment, our project is not much. Basically, it's a demo directory with one file in it. It's actually very straightforward with more recent builds of the editor to add dependencies. We can just come in and say new file and type in pubspec.yaml. And we get this nice um, editor experience. Now, some have mentioned that they would rather not use the editor and you see the native format, and you can do that as well. Right click and go open as text to see that format. And again, if you um, create a new application in the Dart editor by doing um, new project, my menus are over here, just one second, or new application, um, the pub spec and those things will be populated automatically for you, but we're starting from scratch. So let's close the text version and just stay in this nice editor experience, and we'll just add in args. And that's all you need to do. Now, if you want to be specific about what version of args that you require, a minimum version or a maximum version, you can specify that here. But for right now, we'll go with the default. And you'll notice already we have um, the building command working. We already have our packages updated. And since args depends on meta and unit test, those come in as well. So we already have args downloaded and synced into our pub cache and everything's linked. So let's go back to our what's up document and actually import that new package. So it's two levels obviously. You add references in pub to packages and then what you import is libraries from those packages. So we'll import from package args args.dart and args.dart defines the library in that package and actually, if you go into args, you can see that there is one library here, and the code's right there. So sometimes uh, packages will define more than one library, but the general convention is if the name of your library is foo, then you should have 
you'll likely have a library that's also named foo.dart in the root. So it's really easy to import that. And now that we have our args library imported, we can use it. And the most important thing, or the first thing you do when you're using args is create an arg parser. So to keep things a little cleaner, what I'm going to do is actually create a, uh, a factory method, basically, for the args parser for this application. So we'll create a method that returns an arg parser. We'll make it private by hiding it. Not that it really matters, but again, a nice convention I find. And honestly, that's all you have to do. But right now, that arg parser doesn't do much interesting. So let's imagine some things we'd want to do in our arg parser. Um, two ideas that I have right away is one, it might be nice to have a flag to say yell or not. And if the yell flag is set, then we'll capitalize all of our output. The other option I thought of was maybe having an option where a user can provide a value. And we'll do that, we'll call that the greeting. So instead of saying what's up, maybe the user can say something else. So using the really great double dot syntax, we'll go in here and do add flag. And then you'll see there's a bunch of options here. And they're all, except for the first one, they're all named options. So the first thing obviously we'll want is the um, the yell flag, so we'll do yell. The abbreviation, we'll just have by. Help, we'll have, oops, and we need to make sure we provide a name here. Help, we'll have is, just ask nicely, and we'll say that it defaults to false. Negatable, we want that to be true, meaning someone can actually, it's a little overspecified, but if someone, someone wants to be really clear about their intention and make sure yelling doesn't happen, it might be nice to actually let the user negate the yell, even though it defaults to false, and we don't need a callback right now. And the other option, the other parameter we wanted to support is this notion of um, a custom greeting. So let's add another. This time we'll do add option, and the same. We'll let it dump out all the options there, or all the parameters. So here we'll say the greeting. Two E's. We have the abbreviation of G. These all must be single letter. Help will be define a custom reading. Allowed basically says is do we want to filter the, the kinds of or the default allowed values? So an example that we won't do is something like salutation. Let's say we, we could define your own salutation but we want to limit that to only Mr. or Mrs., Ms., Doctor. So you could limit the options provided. But we don't want to do that here. You could actually provide help for all those allowed options. We don't need to do that here. Defaults to, let's keep with what we're doing here, which is, which is we'll use what's up. And we'll use um, double quotes, so we keep that apostrophe in there. And we don't need a callback. And we don't want to allow multiple. You'll only be able to define one kind of greeting. But that's a good example of all the things you can do. And so in one really nice line, we created our new arg parser. And in fact, if you wanted to get even slightly more terse, which some people really like to do, you can use the arrow, arrow syntax. And so we get rid of our curly braces, and we just do the constructor in this format. So there is our arg parser. And now what we can do is we've grabbed our options, which is great. And we've grabbed our arguments from our options, which is also great. At this point, what we'll do is let's skip out on creating our own list there. And actually, we'll just call this args in line. And now we'll get our par parser. Make sure I'm naming this correctly. Yeah. And now, what a parser returns is arg results. And so if we do results, excuse me, parser.parse, our args, we should get a result set back from our parser. So let's, and then to keep the flow and kind of everything else working um, the way it is, not change our existing behavior, what, you'll, what we'll do is um, results has, it does a couple things. One is parse will throw a bunch of wonderful errors if any arguments are passed incorrectly or if someone tries to define an option that doesn't really exist or a flag that doesn't exist. And then for everything that's not a flag, it just populates an array called rest. So results 
has a property called rest. And so what we can do is we can keep the existing model we have for names to list. And so just to make sure that I haven't blown anything up, let's go run this again and see if everything works. So we call what's up, that works. If we do yell, that works great. If we try, let's make up something that doesn't really exist. You'll see we get a format exception because we tried to pass in an arg that isn't valid. So we know we're parsing our args correctly because it's yelling, a, yelling at us if we do something wrong and it seems okay if we do something right. Let's grab the values out of those args. So a first and easy thing to do will be to figure out if we're yelling or not. So I can do a final bool um, is yelling, we'll call it that, and we'll grab that from results and we call that yell. And a nice thing to do here is just to um, wrap up the output in a string variable, in a string um, local variable, and then do an if statement on that value. So we'll stick with our what's up for now. And we'll say if is yelling. And I'm always one to alt-tab and try it every time to make sure things are working correctly. So if we do yell now, we'll notice that we get a great all caps, which is exactly what we want. Now let's try something else really quick, and we'll, do, we'll change the greeting. So what we can do here is say, let's grab out our greeting, and that's a string. And then we'll populate that in our string again. Oops, forgive me. And so by default, if we run this, we should still see what's up. But if we define our greeting, and obviously the question mark is a little out of, out of uh, context right now, but you get the idea. And now that we've defined our args and our parameters, we can still use the same functionality we had before. So I can say hello to my wife and my mother and my dog. And let's change our greeting again to be... So that's how you use the args parser. Um, forgive me for the quick uh, ending to episode two of this series. Um, I won't cut this one off quite so fast, but I, I want to make sure I keep these videos short. In the next video, I'll get even more complicated and interesting with what you can do with the args class and some libraries that I've defined in the bag of tricks. So check that one out.